Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for today's Meet the Russell Group warm up webinar, getting you ready for the virtual event on Wednesday the 7th of October, which is next week. Today we are going to be talking about applying to Russell Group universities. So we're joined by six universities from across the UK to give you some more information about the Russell Group, what it's like to study at a Russell Group university and how to make your application stand out. This webinar is designed to support any students looking to apply to any of the 24 Russell Group universities, as well as to provide an introduction to our virtual event, which is coming up next week. Joining us today, we have Paul from the University of Southampton, Radhika from Queen's University Belfast, Stephen from the University of Warwick, Ewan from Cardiff University, Liam from the University of Glasgow, and Louise from the University of Liverpool. Over the next hour, each of them will be providing advice and will be answering a small selection of questions too. Please feel free to submit questions via the Q&A button on Zoom or in the live chat on YouTube. If we are unable to answer your question today, then we recommend registering for the Meet the Russell Group event, which is taking place next Wednesday, that's the 7th of October, from 12 until 6. And you just need to visit russellgroup.bfairs.com to register for that. We will pop the link in the chat on Zoom. It will also be in the live chat on YouTube and in the YouTube description. So it's super easy to find that and sign yourself up for free. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna pass you over to Paul from Southampton. Okay, Megan, just checking that that's gone full screen. Uh, so welcome, my name is Paul uh, at the University of Southampton and what I want to do is just start today's session by talking a little bit about what the Russell Group is. So put on here the globalisation of higher education, what do I mean by that? Well it's this sense that places like Southampton and other Russell Group universities, we're not competing or collaborating locally or even nationally, we see the work that we do and the research that we carry out on a global scale. We attract academics from all over the world that want to come and uh, teach at our Russell Group Universities and a student body that comes from all over the world that wants to learn with us as well. So I've put on here um, the world's top 100 universities according to the QS World Rankings. And you can see just by the USA, you are sport for choice in terms of uh, world leading institutions um, in the UK. Now, if we look at these 18 in more detail, uh, 17 of them are these Russell Group universities. So what is the Russell Group? Well, they're not the oldest, they're not the richest, they're not those dominating the top of the league tables, they're not those wanting uh, necessarily all A's and A stars. The 24 institutions that make up the Russell Group are there because of their focus on world-class research. I would argue that it's a philosophy. It's looking at these three things equally, and that's research, education, and enterprise. So looking at these big global problems that will affect us all as a society and allowing academics the time off to go and research this and bring that expertise into the classroom and working with you as students to, to find those solutions. I think it's also about a range of opportunities and experiences that will help you build a really good CV that will allow you to go out into what is an increasingly competitive and aggressive jobs market and get those really, really good jobs and careers. And it's easy, I think, when we think of this world-class research to think about curing diseases and cancers and tackling COVID. And we are doing that at places like Southampton, but it's also about all those other non-science subjects as well. This is about academics like Professor Krista Petley. He is a published historian. He's an academic at the University of Southampton and his expertise on British imperial history feeds into the history course that we teach at Southampton, which means our programme, our units, our modules will of course look very different to other Russell Group universities, depending on, on that academic's expertise. If you really wanna drill down into it, and I, and I recommend that you do, here you can see and click on um, the articles that Chris has contributed to, some of the chapters that he's worked on, some of the books. Now, if you go onto a certain university's webpage and you can't find any of this for, for the people that are teaching the course, to me, that says, well, look, who are you learning from? Are you leading from learning from a world leading scholar or are you learning from a history teacher? Someone that is taking someone else's ideas and just regurgitating it kind of year after year. So for me, that's one of the things I think you want to be looking at. And of course, as I said, employability is another main area, not just six months after a student's graduated, 
but one year, two years, five years, 10 years after they've left, you should be able to kind of track and go onto our websites and see, okay, look, just how successful have students been from Russell Group or, or non-Russell Group universities? Where in the country or the world are they working? What sort of job titles do they have? What sort of salaries do they have? Because there is a larger debate that we probably don't have time for today around this kind of short-term value for money and tuition fees and free iPads against a much kind of longer term return on your uh, investment. We're very lucky at Southampton and I'm sure many other of the Russell Group universities get targeted by some of these really, really big uh, employers. I think also though we need to be aware that look, the Russell Group shouldn't be uh, the sole focus of your university search. You are gonna come across some great courses at non-Russell Group universities, places that don't have the breadth and expertise that many Russell Group universities have that will just be very, very good at what they do. However, rightly or wrongly, there are, I think there are certain sectors and certain employers that view the Russell Group as a kind of benchmark for excellence. When we look at here, the 100 largest employers out of the top 20 universities that they target for graduate recruitment, 19 of them are Russell Group universities. So it clearly holds sway with a lot of employers and sectors. And the evidence seems to suggest that with a Russell Group degree under your belt, you are likely to earn more um, as well. So my final slide is just this idea of, look, why would you want to study at a research intensive university? Well, in the age of tuition fees and online learning, all the other issues around education, it's easy to forget that the role of university in society is always meant to be about the pursuit of knowledge. I think that the, if you're capable of getting the sorts of grades that many Russell Group universities want, and I'm being very broad when I say kind of AAB and above, I think you should expect it to be different to your school and college experience. You should look forward to kind of that, that kind of cutting edge research environment. I think unfortunately, the current system of submitting data to the Guardian and league tables every year and the teaching excellence framework don't really highlight the benefits of learning from these uh, world leading academics. We often get asked as, as representatives of universities, you know, how many hours am I gonna have? It's an obsession and I get why students ask it. They wanna know how many hours a week they, they, they're gonna get taught. It's a good question, but I think it's the wrong one. I think it's much more important about, look, who are you learning from? You know, if you taught for half the amount of time, but, but in, a, in a world leading academic environment, then that's the thing I think you really wanna be looking at. Uh, is, is who you're, you're learning from. So look, good luck with your applications and I'll stick around at the end for uh, any questions. Thanks very much. Perfect, thank you, Paul. Next up, we will be talking to Radhika. Radhika's from Queen's University Belfast and she'll be talking to you about how to research Russell Group courses and places. Thank you, Radhika. There we are. Megan, can you see my screen? Perfect, okay. And, and you can hear me as well. Okay, so my name is Radhika Longbottom and I am the GB Recruitment Officer for Queen's University in Belfast. Uh, we're the only university in Northern Ireland, which is part of the Russell Group. And um, we're very, very proud and pleased to be part of this group. Now, what I'm gonna be talking about today is how to research courses and places at the Russell Group Universities. Um, I appreciate that uh, a lot of you are probably thinking, uh, well, there are 24 universities, how do I know what's right for me? Well, that in reality is no different to looking for a, a university in any other, um, you know, looking for a course or a place at any other university in the UK. Um, my humble suggestion to you would be that you perhaps look at selecting the subject area first. So for example, what it is that you're interested in, um, you know, so is it something, for example, you want to work in insurance, so you want to do a, a course in say actuarial science. Now, that is a very specialist area, so you would need to do uh, a degree in actuarial science or are you interested um, in doing something that's that's very cutting edge and it's driven by research something like biotechnology well then you need to be looking in that general area 
once you've decided on uh, the subject that you're interested in, obviously the next thing then is to research for the course. Um, what you will find is that universities call courses lots of different things. Essentially, um, it's a combination of a number of core and optional modules. And what you really need to be looking at is to see whether each course that is offered meets your particular needs. Now, it might be called something like biotechnology in one university, in somewhere else, it might be pharmacy and biotechnology. So don't just go by the heading, look at what's underneath, look at the, the core modules, look at the optional modules. But also very important in terms of finding the right course really, is to try and look at what suits your needs. Are you somebody that works really well in an academic environment? Or are you someone that prefers sort of bite-sized teaching? What other opportunities does your course offer? So for example, do you really want to go and study abroad? Do you want a placement as a part of your course? Well, those are also important considerations to look into when you're researching your course. And last but not the least, as with all research, with all universities, Russell Group universities are no different. Each university has its own individual entry requirement. So don't just assume that because you're going to study medicine at Oxford and they ask for certain grades, Queen's University also asks for those grades. For us, for example, at medicine, we also look at your GCSE grades. So you need to be mindful that entry requirements generally vary by each university. Now, once you've chosen your broad subject area, once you've chosen your course, the next thing really to do is to look at what universities are out there. Now, there are 24 universities out there, and a lot of them have got lots of very, very strong sort of um, selling points or unique um, sort of strengths. Um, what sort of person are you? Are you a city person? Are you a campus person? Now, something like Warwick University, Stephen's gonna speak after me, is, is a campus university. Um, the London universities, for example, Cardiff, Queens, we are city universities, but we are also campus universities. So you need to find the university that's right for you. You might be interested in the reputation. Now, the reputation varies. It could be the academic who's teaching the course and their research credibility. It could be the ranking of the actual course, if that's what you're driven by. It could be the ranking in terms of the university. And last but not the least, we appreciate that when you go to university, it is a significant investment. So find a university that really suits your pocket, you know, it is natural that some cities are, are more expensive than others. At Belfast, for example, we're very proud of the fact that it's, a, it's one of the cheapest cities to live in the UK, but also that our student rent is the lowest. But that's not all. You need to look at the full picture when you're trying to look for universities and courses that are right for you within the Russell Group. So in short, do your research. There isn't a single magic website or a single place that you can go to to find all the answers. So if you think to yourself, I want to apply to Russell Group Universities, there isn't a single website that you can look at. However, these two websites that I've listed here are probably one of the well, two of the, the most popular ones. My personal favorite is the Informed Choices website, which is available through the Russell Group web, web page. And that's really great because it allows you to, um, you know, if you've, if you've decided the, the degree that you want to study, it takes you down the route and gives you information about, for example, what the prerequisites are for, in Queens, for example, you would need to have done a level three qualification in maths to be able to be considered for any of our engineering programs. So it's those sort of details, but equally, if you're undecided, you have no idea what you wanna do at university, then it's a really useful website for that. The UCAS Hub is a brand new website for those that are entering in 2021, another fantastic website that gives you a plethora of options. 
these are by no means the only two websites. There's a lot of information out there. But if you're looking for places, courses within the Russell Group, then please do check individual university websites. Most of them are up to date and you, they will allow you to order prospectuses. We all run virtual events. Um, engage with the social media, talk to the students, talk to alumni, talk to people who have been there before. And last but not the least, when it is safe, you can go out and visit. So I'm gonna stop here at this point and hand over to, I think it's Stephen. Thank you very much for that Radhika. Next up we do have Stephen and Stephen is from the University of Warwick and he'll be talking to you about applying to the Russell Group. So that's different things about competitive courses, deadlines and other things to consider. Thank you Stephen. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, hi, I'm Stephen from the University of Warwick. It's nice to see so many of you in the room with us today. Fantastic. Uh, so today it's all about the Russell Group. Um, and as you can imagine, most of the courses at Russell Group universities are fairly competitive to get onto. So I'd like to spend a few minutes today just looking at the application process and tell you broadly what it is we are. So I guess you've all heard of UCAS, um, but do you know what it stands for? Well, it stands for the Universities and Colleges Admissions Service. So pretty much anyone who wants to apply to a university in the UK has to do so through UCAS. And this is how it works. So you fill in your UCAS form and uh, your school will add a reference and send it off to UCAS. UCAS will then send it to each of the five universities that you're applying to. And when it arrives at those universities, it will be read by the admissions tutor. And it's their job to decide whether or not you get offered a place on the course. That's why your UCAS application is so important. Let's have a quick look at deadlines. Um, so if you're interested in applying to the universities of Oxford or Cambridge, or perhaps you're interested in medicine, veterinary science or dentistry, you will have an early deadline of the 15th if you want to apply for just about anything else, then the deadline is the 15th of January. Now, it's important to remember to get your application in before that deadline. All applications we receive before the deadline have to be given equal consideration. And that's important to remember. So what about entry requirements? Obviously, this is very important, and this is where you do need to do a bit of research. They will vary from university to university, um, but also from course to course. So you can see, for example, at Warwick, they range from ABB and right up to A star, A star, A. That's if you're applying for mathematics. Some subjects will require additional or specific A level. So, for example, if you're applying for engineering, uh, you would need mathematics and physics. You'll find that's fairly standard. So it's worth checking if your subject does require specific. Some universities, uh, some Russell Group universities will acquire, uh, require additional admission tests. Uh, so for example, BMAT for medicine, LMAT for law, uh, or Warwick we ask for STEP for mathematics. So again, that's worth checking as well. And that's where university websites and perspectives are really important for doing that research and really getting that insight into what it is we are asking for. So what is it that admissions tutors are looking for? This is the all important question, isn't it? Um, essentially, it's three things. First of all, as you might expect, it's your academic qualifications. So it's your predicted grades at GCSE. Um, sorry, it's your achieved grades at GCSE. And it's your predicted grades at A-level or IB or BTEC, depending on what qualification you study. Your personal statement is really important. We're going to be hearing lots more about that in a minute. But essentially, it's your chance to tell us what you want to study, uh, why you want to study it and give us some um, idea of what motivates you, okay? That's really important. Personal statement is absolutely key. Uh, I know Ewan's gonna be telling us more, a lot more about that in a minute. And finally, your teacher's reference. So your teachers will be adding a reference to your form. They'll be talking about your suitability for the course, a bit about your personal qualities, and maybe any factors that might influence your performance as well. 
So we take a holistic approach to the application and we'll be looking at all of those factors when we're deciding whether or not to make you an offer. Okay, just finally, I want to uh, explode some common myths that you might hear about the UCAS application. And the first one is that admissions tutors don't read personal statements or references. I can tell you categorically, that is not true. We do absolutely read them and they can make all the difference. We might um, use them in different ways and that's a question you might want to ask us in the Q&A after the presentations, but absolutely they do get read. Uh, next myth, the sooner I get my application in, the more likely I will be to get an offer. No, that's not right, because as I mentioned earlier, we have to give equal consideration to all of the applications we receive before that deadline. And last one, if I don't put Warwick or X University on my, first on my list, then they will reject me. That's not the case, because we won't see any of the other universities listed in the review criteria. We only see our own university. Okay, thanks for listening and uh, look forward to chatting to you a bit later on. Perfect, thank you very much, Stephen. Next up, we will be talking to Ewan. Ewan is from Cardiff University and he'll be giving you some tips for your personal statement. Thank you. Hi everyone, just gonna share my screen now. Okay. Hopefully that's, um, that's come up. Okay. Um, I have got quite a bit I want to get through in the next five minutes, so I'm going to get straight into it. Um, just following on from what Stephen said, one thing to, to really, really um, kind of drill, drill home is that the personal statement is very important. I know that sometimes um, people say, oh, no one even reads a statement, but that's, that's not true. Admissions students would always look at the statement um, because they need to find out about you as a student and they need to be able to look at other things just um, and not just academic capability. They, they look for an all round student. Um, like I said, to get straight into it, the, the, the best way, the best way you can start a statement, the, the best thing you can do is, is actually what happens before you write the statement. And that's by when you make your choice. As Radhika said earlier on, choose something you've got an interest in. If you choose something you've got an interest and a passion for, then writing the statement gets a lot easier. Um, and what it also does is makes you stand out a lot more. Um, admissions shooters ultimately want a student on their course who's going to thrive, who's going to want to learn more, who's going to come with their own ideas, who's going to do well and, and love the course they take. Now, they can gain that sort of understanding and information from the personal statement. If I was to say to you guys now, right, think of your favourite topic, subject in school, TV, show, film, anything at all, and write 47 lines on it, because there is a 47 line limit um, on the UCAS application form, which works out around about 4,000 characters. Um, because it's something you've chosen and something you've got a genuine interest in, you probably find that quite straightforward and, and you'd actually enjoy writing it because you're talking about something you, you like. Whereas if I was to say to you, right, I want you to write 47 lines on something I've chosen for you, but you had no interest in that, then you're going to find it much more difficult. And that's going to show when a tutor reads it. So what you do before actually kind of gets you over that first hurdle of starting it because it's something you enjoy talking about and writing about as well. Other things to do is, is make sure you take your time. The statement isn't something you can just do overnight. Um, you had the really helpful, you had the deadline dates in the, in the talk just gone. Um, don't leave it too late. Don't leave it until near the time because it is something that does take a long time. I, I speak to lots of students who are doing six, seven drafts of a personal statement. Um, so it is something you've got to start earlier. Um, if you plan what you want to say, it should be a, a lot easier then. If you make notes and if you write down what you want to include, different topics, things you've done in school, what maybe what career you want to go into, what experience have you got, what did you do in your spare time, what books have you read. If you Once you start to write all those things down and start to plan properly, you'll find that actually you've got a lot to talk about. One thing that students quite often think before they write a statement is, I'm never going to fill 4,000 characters, but what you most likely will find is that you've got too much to say. So that's why planning earlier and, and thinking about what you want to include and what's important, that will help you a, a lot as well when you go through the process. Um, explain the reason for your choice. Think about why you want to take that course. It is really important for tutors to know why that course. Is it because you want to move into a certain career? Is it because it's a field your parents have worked in so you've grown up in that environment? Is it because of an interest and a passion that you really want to develop further? There's no real wrong reason. 
but let us know let us know why it is you want to study that course and why that interest really grabs you show any examples of any experience you might have or any reading you've done um, especially at the moment given giving everything that's going on um, you may have struggled to get work experience and you may be worried about that, but um, try not to worry too much. I've spoken to our School of Medicine at Cardiff and they've said anyone who isn't able to get physical work experience, as long as they've done some reading and research, that's going to be just as valuable. So, so make the most of reading and, and any research you can do as well, especially into the field you're looking to study in and work in. Tell us what skills you've gained. Now, this can be from um, your subject now. It could be from a part time job. It could be from volunteering you've done. It could be playing in a sports team. Skills such as communication skills, teamwork, problem solving, thinking on your feet. Those sort of skills are going to be very valuable going to university. So think about anywhere where you've developed skills and make sure you tell us that. One of the things that tutors don't like is if someone kind of lists loads of things they've done, but they don't actually tell us what they gained from that and what they've learned from that. So it's really important that whatever you do, be it part time work, like I said, volunteering, a sports team, tell us what you've gained from that and why it's been important. One thing to try and do is think of the ABC. So the, the A, the activity, so what you've done. Then you've got B, you've got the benefits of what you actually gained from that. And then you've got C, you've got the course and how can you use that benefit? How can you use that skill you developed on your course? And then finally, keep it clear and concise. And this again is, is why I say take your time and give yourself enough of a head start with this. Because like I said, you know, we, we have students sometimes come into us with, you know, double what they need to have done. So they'd rather then trim it down and be really clear and concise. Sometimes leave out things they didn't really want to. Um, but be really clear and concise. Tutors read hundreds or thousands of these, so they want to read a statement that gets straight to the point normally. Um, what I've got on the right hand side of the screen just to finish off is, is an example of, of some, some help you can get. Every single university here and every single university at the, at the event next week will have advice online. Um, one thing I'd really encourage you to do next week at the event is to speak to individual universities about their application process, ask them what they look for in a personal statement, because they can then give you information or direct you to the website where you can find that a lot more. Uh, and they may have something similar to us where we've got this downloadable personal statement planner. So it gives you all the advice you need. Um, I'll leave it there. I've tried to squeeze quite a lot into only five minutes. So I apologize if I did rush that. Um, but again, like I said, use the Q&A or, or speak to us next week. And hopefully that was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ewan. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking to Liam from the University of Glasgow, and he's going to talk to you about the Ross Group learning experience and research-led teaching and independence. Thank you, Liam. Thanks. Um, oh, okay. Hopefully it shares. Excellent. I got a thumbs up that that's uh, on display okay? Excellent, thank you. Uh, thanks for join, joining us um, this afternoon. Um, I'm Liam, I'm from the University of Glasgow. I'm just gonna to chat to you a little bit about um, the Russell Group learning experience. Um, I'm gonna try and give you sort of a, a broad uh, overview. I'm not gonna have a lot of time to go into detail. But what I would really encourage you to do is to take advantage of uh, the event uh, next week to really get into the detail. And of course, you can always contact each of the universities, including Glasgow, uh, individually as well. So uh, what, what do we mean about the Russell Group learning experience? What is it that, that, that makes it particularly unique or special? Well, um, firstly, as, as what was discussed earlier from Paul, you know, it's high quality teaching. And the reason they've got such high quality teaching is the... Um, the the, the 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 you know the 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 level that the research the 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 individuals work at the the academics so the research that they're doing is world leading and that trickles down um uh, to the teaching uh, as well but it's not just um lectures uh, you know you can there are different types of learning experiences that you can get at, at russell group universities so um it's not just that traditional um, lecture and seminar model that you might have heard of. There's a lot more to it uh, as well, and I'll try and kind of get into that in a few minutes as well. The other great aspect is um, the fact that we've got 
a lot of international students coming to uh, Russell Group universities in the UK. So approximately 32% of students uh, are international in Russell Group universities. And this is great because it not only means that you can find friends from exotic places all across the world where you can go on holiday really, really cheap, but it's also an opportunity for you to get ideas, um, inspiration from different cultures, and uh, you know you can benefit from that greatly uh, as well. There's also study abroad opportunities, uh, which I think we'll touch on later on in, in this webinar, but uh, a, lot, a lot of these institutions have global connections uh, as, as well. We have lots of great learning resources available to you. Um, so uh, IT services, online journals, um, libraries, Glasgow's for example, have got a 12 story library. Um, so lots of different resources that you can use, but there's also alternative study space as well. Um, what's become clear, um, you know, is that in, in, as we go through teaching in the 21st century is that people learn in different styles and, and ways. So uh, we try to create sort of open sort of hubs where people can, you know, speak in groups and, and, and learn in different ways. So it's not just sitting individually uh, in a library. And also there's lots of additional academic support. Transitioning from a school or, or college and in, into a university can be quite daunting, um, but the, we, we do have a lot of support available to facilitate that. So um, sometimes it can feel like quite uh, an intense uh, transition. You know, you're, you've gone from having, you know, lots of different classes to maybe less classes. But there are a lot of different resources available. So to use an example, we have at Glasgow, we have a, a learning and enhancement sort of academic service and development service. And basically they will help teach you the soft skills that you need uh, and help you kind of get up to date with anything. Maybe you're not used to writing essays or, or coursework and they will help you understand how to, you know, put them together and, 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 and how to, you know, present effectively. Uh, as well. So those resources are there too. Research-led teaching, well, as I touched on earlier, it's all about being taught by world-leading experts. And uh, what you'll find is that this influences the curriculum. Um, so you'll find uh, if you go when you're researching universities, I do recommend that you look at uh, courses at the modular level as well. Some universities will have their course catalogues uh, on display and you can see how um, each of these modules might link to a research project that someone uh, within the research uh, university is doing. So to give you an example, uh, at Glasgow we have, uh, you know, precision medicine is one of our key research themes. Uh, there's a module in physics, not biology, but physics uh, about medical imaging um, as well. And we also have modules uh, around immunology, which again relates to COVID-19 as, as well, uh, but also previous um, viruses that we've had. So um, there's a lot of cross-disciplinary courses as well. So you'll find that, uh, you know, there'll be modules that relate to, as I said, with physics and biology meet, and you'll find that popping up all over the course catalogs as well. So I do encourage you to try and look at that detail uh, as well. That will really help you kind of define where you want to go. Um, in addition, there's also lots of links with industry uh, and this increases your employability as well. So, um, you know, locally and uh, abroad, you'll find that there are, 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 you know, companies that will, you know, commission universities to conduct uh, research and um, use the facilities and provide funding. Um, and again, that can establish a link that will be to your advantage um, should you decide to, uh, you know, work for that company or, or continue on further research as well. So it's also a good foundation for further studies because we're quite research intensive universities. If you want to continue uh, into, you know, being, uh, you know, into postgraduate level and perhaps becoming an academic yourself, then, you know, there's a very strong foundation uh, within a Russell Group University. Conscious of time, uh, but just kind of to touch on as well, independent study. As I said, um, you know, it is a different style of learning than what you're used to, but um, what it does teach is key skills and self-discipline and problem solving. 
universities are not going to hold your hand. They're not going to, you know, uh, spoon feed you the information. There's an expectation for you to go out there uh, and uh, read all the research or, you know, conduct the experiments in the lab as well to, to, to discover your own findings. Um, but, you know, that is really beneficial to you because that increases your employability. It shows you that you can work autonomously and as well in groups because you'll be given group exercises uh, too. But as I've stated in that slide, don't panic. There's still plenty of support. You just need to be proactive about it. It's basically the case we won't know that you're struggling with the study until you put up your hand and tell us. But as soon as you do, you'll find all the universities will be able uh, to help you. And um, as I said, it demonstrates you know value to to employers. And uh, as part of that, you know most courses you will also uh, be expected to do uh, a dissertation or a research project, which will again uh, will provide evidence of your ability you know, to solve problems on your own, uh, you know, run your own sort of research uh, project, which is very, very valuable as well. So um, I think I've touched on everything that I wanted to touch on. Uh, please do ask any questions uh, at the end. Uh, I'll be here. Thanks. Thank you very much, Liam. Um, next up, we're going to be going over to our last panellist, and this is Louise from the University of Liverpool. She will be talking about value added experiences such as studying abroad and placements. Um, so I'll just hand over. Thank you very much, Megan. Now. Right, yes, so hello everyone. Um, I'm going to expand on a couple of things which um, Paul and Liam very helpfully introduced earlier on in the presentation, but I'm going to try and emphasize how these will actually impact you as a student at a Russell Group University. So please remember, we're always talking about the Russell Group, but we are individual universities. So we'll all be able to offer you slightly different things. So I'm gonna try and talk in general terms for you. Because quite often, the things you get involved with at university outside the classroom will have just as much impact on your enjoyment, your success and your future career um, as what you're actually doing as a degree topic. So make sure you investigate all the options that are available to you and take advantage of all of those that you can. So first off, we've talked about is the global reach of Russell Group universities. Well, what's the advantage for you as a student? Uh, well, firstly, quite a few of us do have campuses internationally. Um, so you have the opportunity of taking your studies abroad. Even if we don't have our own campuses, we have lots of links with other universities. So for a study abroad program, you can perhaps spend a whole year studying your subject there, um, or perhaps just a summer school program. So you get a bit of a taste of it. So having that international element that global perspective on your CV will be really valuable later on. So to find out what each university in the Russell Group offers regarding global placements, check their websites. Um, so you can type in perhaps what subject area you're interested in studying and find out what opportunities are available. How long can you go for? Where can you possibly go? Careers, of course, is again another thing which you should absolutely take advantage of. So most universities now across the board will be able to give you support for applying for work, whether that's part-time work while you're study or once you've graduated in there, preparing for interviews, all of those sorts of things. Um, but it's really important that you do take advantage of those. But the advantage of a Russell Group University, as has been mentioned a couple of times already, is our links with businesses and industries at a local, national and international level. So you saw Southampton's links earlier on. Here's just some of those that we offer at the University of Liverpool. So you can see there's a very broad range of different sorts of companies that you can actually create links with to enhance your experiences while you're a student, but also improve your employability later on too. So to get involved with as a student, Universities will offer things like careers fairs, where they'll bring in employers that you can meet, you can network with, um, perhaps you can hear their stories of how they got established in their profession. These are still happening now, but of course they are virtual at the moment. 
with lots of university options where you can perhaps have a whole year in industry or perhaps an internship or a shorter placement in a business. These are advantageous, of course, in your employability options later on, but it allows you to place all of those skills and experiences that you're learning in your academic environment out into the real world. So you get a taste of what it's like to actually be a, an employee in that area. Now, if you don't want to do a full year program, there'll be lots of other opportunities for you to make links with businesses. So at Liverpool, we have some that are just involved within a module itself. So as part of your classroom activity, they bring in speakers and you can do assignments all based around putting your academic skills and knowledge into context, into the business environment. And of course, clubs and societies, there's been a lot of emphasis on the, the prestige of the Russell Group, but they can also be really fun too. So don't dismiss all of those clubs and societies that you can get involved with, because of course, yes, you can make friends, it will help you get settled, um, you'll meet people from all over the world, but you'll actually develop lots of skills. So for example, if you are the, the treasurer for the baking society, you're developing financial skills there. If you're involved with perhaps the, the Geography Society or the Latin American Society, you can organize activities. You can develop those sorts of skills as well. You might be able to, to create a marketing campaign if you've got your own radio show as part of the Students' Union. So absolutely get involved with all of these different sorts of things. They'll enhance your experience of university and also they'll look really great on your CV later on in life. So we are talking about the Russell Group, of course, um, but please remember we're all individual institutions. So we'll all have different courses, we'll ask for different grades, we'll look at your personal statement in different ways, of course, and we'll have lots of these extra value added experiences for you to take advantage of as well. So make the most of university open days, virtual, and then perhaps hopefully physical ones as well. Look at university websites, and also take advantage of any other virtual events, which I'm going to hand back to Megan now, and I'm sure she can tell you more details about the one that's coming up next week. So make sure you take advantage and ask us all, all these different questions. Perfect, thank you very much, Louise. Um, so we are gonna move on to questions in a little bit. So if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to submit them into the Q&A on Zoom or into the live chat on YouTube. Before we answer some of those, as Louise mentioned, we wanted to use this webinar today to give you some more details about Meet the Russell Group, which is a virtual event taking place next week, Wednesday the 7th of October, and that will be running from 12 noon until 6pm. I hope that the presentations today have provided you with lots of information if you are already thinking about applying to Russell Group University or inspired you along the way. Um, Meet the Russell Group will provide you with so much more information about applying to Russell Group University. Um, so we'll, you'll be able to visit a virtual exhibition hall, which will be just like any careers fairs that you've visited before, um, or any that have been hosted in your own sports halls. You can walk through different stands um, from all the different 24 Russell Group universities. You can visit their booths, and download prospectuses, view application advice, um, student finance information, bursary advice um, and you'll be able to chat live to university representatives they can advise you about your application they can uh, you can ask questions about courses about open days um, access student life they will have people available throughout the day who you can talk to and you can ask any questions that you have and they'll be able to give you lots more details and advise you on where to look for more information as well um, so if you do want to get involved, then please visit russellgroup.bfairs.com. Um, that will be live from 12 until 6 on Wednesday, the 7th of October. And there'll be 12 live webinars happening throughout the day as well, just like this one. Um, and all the different universities will be hosting webinars. Um, I've popped the link into the chat if you're viewing on Zoom. It's also in the chat on YouTube and it will be in the YouTube description. Okay, so let's get on with some of the questions today. And um, we are going to, just going to do a small selection as there's only about 15 minutes left of the webinar. Um, but as I've mentioned, if you do have any questions then please register for the event as well. We will go in the same order as we've done for the presentations. And um, so we'll start from, with Paul from Southampton. Um, so a question for Paul, what kind of questions should I be asking when I visit universities virtual open days? Well, that is a very broad question. 
Um, well, like I say, I think we it's it's easy as 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 Louis said, it's easy to forget that when we've spoken about all the things are very from, from a very academic focus today. And I think it's easy to forget that obviously there is that social side to, to university as well. Now, the reality is that for many students right now, that that social experience is going to be very different to what um, other students would have experienced in the past. But I think I think it's about as we as we've kind of intimated throughout the different speakers, it's about finding the course that's right for you. Whilst many of us probably offer very similar courses, there will be those kind of nuances and differences there'll be different teaching styles, there'll be different setups. So it's always a very kind of personal experience. Some students will always focus on different things compared to others. Some will be much more interested in the social side, the activities, you know, the, the kind of practical things of, you know, how far away it is from home and that sort of thing, where others will be prepared to kind of sacrifice those sort of things more for the education experience. So in terms of questions, certainly I'd be asking at the minute things like, well, what is your teaching looking like obviously for many universities teaching is 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 undertaken very differently at the minute so that might be something to to ask um you know what what, what are universities doing to to kind of put the curriculum across given the the kind of covid circumstances but other than that you know another good question i think might be to ask some for some resources you know can they recommend a good first year undergraduate textbook to help them get a sense of the subject that will certainly help with things like the personal statement so you know any anything that you can glean from them that will help you build your knowledge on that subject you know and even, even if you come away thinking well actually that's not the course for me you've got to use those kind of live opportunities you know as we've said it's unlikely that you're going to get to physically visit a university for an open day anytime soon so use those online opportunities and perhaps some of that anonymity to ask the questions that you know, you might have been afraid to put your hand up in a lecture theatre. Now is the time that you can ask all of those questions to make sure you, that you get the answers you want. That's great. Thank you very much, Paul. Very detailed answer for you there. Um, next up, we have a question for Radhika from Queen's University, Belfast. Um, will I have to have an interview if I apply to a Russell Group University? Um, I think when it comes to interviews, it um, really depends on the, the, the university that you're applying to. Uh, each university is, is different. There are those universities that have a mandatory interview, irrespective of the course that you apply to. And then there are those universities that have an interview only for specific courses. So for example, at Queen's, we will interview all of our candidates for our medicine, for our dentistry, and for our nursing programs. We also interview students for our social work programs. So um, my, my answer to your question would be to look at each university and find out what their requirements are and uh, take it from there. Perfect. Thank you, Radhika. Thank you. Next up, we have a question for Stephen from the University of Warwick. This is one that we had through on email. So thank you for sending this through. Can you apply for different courses at the same university? Yes, absolutely you can. Yeah, I hope you can hear me now, by the way. There were, there were some problems with my microphone during my talk, so I do apologise for that, but I hope you can hear me now. Um, can you apply for more than one course at one university? Yes. Yeah, just be aware um, that it will use up more than one choice. Uh, on your on your UCAS applications, you've only got five choices, so it will count as, as two choices, even if it's the same university. The other thing to bear in mind is uh, with your UCAS choices is that there needs to be a bit of a theme running through them. Don't be applying for completely different courses because you only get to write one personal statement, and that personal statement needs to uh, tell us why you're interested in this particular course area. So do have that sort of specific theme running through all of your five choices, even if you're applying for more than one at one university. Perfect, thank you very much, Stephen. Next up, we have a question for Ewan, and this is to kind of expand on things that you talked about in your in your presentation, Ewan. Um, if I've missed out on work experience um, over the summer, um, can you recommend a few different things that I could talk about instead in my personal statement? Yeah, of course. So um, you, you, lots of places at the moment are actually doing online work experience. So depending on the course uh, a student would look into study, if they did a bit of research, they may be able to find some online stuff they can do. I know, for example, for medicine, 
um, there are various places, the names will escape me, of course, but various places that um, they can get online work experience. Aside from that, they can draw experiences they learned from school in their time at school or college, any sort of position they may have had, like head boy or head girl or anything they've done on there, any project work they've done. Um, but also any sort of reading or research is just as valuable. Uh, doing some further reading into a topic shows, like I mentioned earlier, shows a passion. It shows different skills. If you've done some research into it, it shows research and analytical skills as well. So students shouldn't be worried at the moment about having no physical work experience because we universities know that it's not through, through, through lack of trying. It's because they've not been able to. But things like reading and research and trying to find online work experience can be just as valuable. Thank you very much, Ewan. Next up, a question for Liam from University of Glasgow. Um, do you recommend studying an EPQ at A-level? And if so, how can I work that into my personal statement to talk about it? OK, um, what I would recommend is, uh, yes, I would recommend doing it, but it would depend on uh, each university's admissions processes. So some universities will recognise the EPQ and others will not. Um, so it will be a balancing act. So I would first research uh, the universities that you're interested in and ask how they view the EPQ, because there are some universities that wouldn't recognize it with the same value. And so you might be better putting your energy into other A levels. So first steps first would be, yeah, just, just contact the admission services of each university. Um, you'll find they'll get back to you at a reasonable time frame. But because we're going through COVID-19, um, I would do it sooner rather than later because they do take a bit of time to get back to you just due to the volume of emails that we're getting. So um, I hope that answers your question. Perfect. Thank you, Liam. And now one for Louise from the University of Liverpool. Um, how will COVID-19 affect um, any studying abroad or placements? Do you have like alternatives in place in case someone wanted to pursue that? Well, at the moment, everything is moving so incredibly quickly. So anything that I might, may say today might not be accurate for, for next week or indeed next year. But do you want to reassure students that we do have very strong links with our international colleagues? So there will be sort of alternative um, options for you to have that sort of globalization uh, of your university degree. So we are still having international students to visit us, um, but we'll have to assess that once we get a bit closer to see what the different governmental guidelines, et cetera, are. But of course, we do have very strong links with our researchers as well. So students can benefit during their studies as well, even if they don't physically um, go internationally. Perfect. Thank you, Louise. Um, one that's going to be expanding upon to, I'm going to ask to three different people. So if you all wanted to chime in, um, that'd be really good. Um, a lot of Russell Group universities are based in England, but we do have um, Russell Groups in Scotland, Northern Ireland and in Wales. Um, would Liam, Radhika and Ewan, would you be able to explain a little bit to students about how studying in your countries might be a little bit different if they were looking to apply outside England? Um, Liam, if you wanted to start. Yeah, so there are two Russell Group universities in Scotland. So there's Glasgow and there is Edinburgh. Um, one of the big differences you'll find uh, in Scotland is uh, the four year degree structure. So you'll find that um, instead of the standard three year degree, uh, it's actually four years. And when you enter, if, if it's a non-professional degree, so if it's not medicine, if it's not law, if say it's something just like physics or, or philosophy, um, just, just to give a few examples, um, you will actually get the opportunity to study more than one subject in your uh, first year. So to give an example at Glasgow, you can actually study English literature and you can combine that with history and you can combine that with something like politics or, or geography to give an example there or sociology. So you can actually, you know, change your degree as well to a certain extent um, and in your second or, or third years and you can go do joint honours and single honours. So I would say that that's the biggest thing. And of course, in Scotland, the weather is always sunny. Um, that's always quite a good bonus. And um, there is also... Uh, 
the opportunity to you know explore the country as well so there's a lot of you know if you're quite outdoorsy you've got easy accessibility to the highlands Loch Lomond all that sort of thing as well by the way I was only joking about the sunny part and uh yes but I would say the biggest thing would be the um would would be the the the, the flexible degree so do investigate that further that would be what I'd recommend doing Right, so I'll I'll go next. Ivan, even if that's okay with you, is that all right, Megan? Super. So, um, what? Well, first of all, Belfast is uh, very very well connected to the rest of the United Kingdom. That includes Great Britain, which is England, Scotland, Wales, as well as the islands. We're also very, very well connected with the rest of the world. There are something like uh, 99 cross-channel ferries between um, GB and uh, Belfast. There are something like um, 54 flights from Belfast out into the rest of the world as well. So it doesn't mean that when you come and study at Belfast, you're stuck there you're going to go out, you're going to have plenty of opportunity to go out and explore outside of um, the, the island of, of Ireland as well. Um, but I think what makes Belfast really special is that it is a capital city. And despite being a capital city, it's one of the cheapest places to live. Um, the reason for that is because student rent is the lowest in the UK. Um, but what really stands out for me as somebody that visits Belfast um, regularly is that Belfast is a very, very friendly city. The Irish are, are a very warm bunch. Um, they, they like to go out and to that end in terms of, of the nightlife and what the city has to offer to you, you know, there's plenty to do whatever your taste. Uh, it's also the artistic, the political uh, uh, capital of Northern Ireland. So there's plenty to do whatever your interest. Um, and within a short sort of commute of Belfast, uh, you're over to the North Antrim coast where you've got the beautiful Giants Causeway and lots of Game of Thrones sort of sets and very rugged um, uh, countryside. Um, but what really makes Belfast special is that it's a very compact city and the university is within touching distance of the city centre. So um, I will stop there and hand over to... Me. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, so in terms of um, teaching and, and stuff like that and, and, and structure, um, Cardiff in, in Wales is, is no different to any university in, the UK, in, in England, really. Um, three-year options, four-year options, placement years, um, student finance works exact same as well. Um, one of the, the biggest differences is, is just Wales itself. It's um, a quarter of Wales is, is either in a national park or an area of outstanding natural beauty. Um, being in Cardiff, very similar to Belfast, being in Cardiff, it's a capital city, but very small and compact. You can walk everywhere. Um, you're also then 20 minutes away from Barry Island Beach, where they film Gavin and Stacey. You're 25 minutes away from the Brecon Beacons Mountain Range, which is a beautiful national park. So it's just it's just an amazing, beautiful place to live. It's also the first country in the world to have um, an entire footpath covering its coastline. It's obviously going to be a, a long walk, but it's it's just the beauty of the country that really makes it stand out. One just to finish from me, one misconception we get is that you have to speak Welsh if you come to Wales, but that's not true of, uh, at all. Um, you can, if you want to, you can learn Welsh for free if you come to Cardiff and if you do want to stay in and work in Wales after you graduate, it is quite good to have a skill like the Welsh language, so it's, it's always good to do, but I sometimes get asked, oh, I can't come to Wales, I don't speak Welsh, but you don't have to. I've lived in Wales 33 years and I, I speak bare minimum and I've, I've managed to get by just fine. 
Thank you very much, Ewan. Um, unfortunately, we have reached the end of the webinar today. The hour went very quickly, I know. Uh, packed a lot of different advice in today. Um, if you do have another question that you wanted to ask today, then don't panic. Um, you haven't missed out. As I explained earlier, we have a whole event happening next week. That's Wednesday, the 7th of October. Meet the Russell Group. Um, so please do come along and you'll be able to talk to all of the universities that were here today. Um, so that's Southampton, Warwick, Liverpool, Carl. Cardiff, Queen's University, Belfast and Glasgow, as, long, as well as 18 other Russell Group universities. Um, so they'll all be there. Whoever you've been having a look at studying with um, will be available for you to talk to. Um, so the link is in the description on YouTube, it's in the chat on YouTube and it's in the Zoom chat um, so you can't miss it. It's russellgroup.vfairs.com. Thank you very much to all of our panellists today and um, they provided you with lots of advice and answered a lot of questions as well. And uh, We hope to see you next week and thank you for joining us. <laughs>